Hey, how you doing? Don't jump ahead right here. We are in the midst of making choices that last forever. So I'm putting this right at the very beginning. I have rotated the drill 90 degrees to reset it for drilling stairway handrail. And one of the things that I found, the roll pins, I talked about roll pins either. I was just gonna drill new holes. Those roll pins are what keeps this drill head from dropping down. Hold it in place. However, the thing is set inside of there. Anyhow, I have drilled when it's set out the other way, when it's turned 90 degrees for doing benches and stuff and regular drilling. I drilled a set, a new set of holes through the column, about halfway between the two set screws. Okay? So they go right straight through the column. Quarter inch bolt goes through there. Now I have a plumb line here at the middle of the truck going down to that line that we drew on the, the base unit. So I've rotated it exactly 90 degrees. It's 90 degrees to the world here. And I'm going to put through from this side and then from that side quarter inch hole so we can pin a bolt through the casting of the drill head and through the column so as you go from one setting, or as I do, go from one setting to the other, I can just pull that one bolt out, turn it 90 degrees, put the bolt back in, and just snug up the two little set screws, okay? <laughs> All right, oh yeah, this, oh yes, uh-huh, what do you think? Here, I'll get a little closer, you can see. Na uh, uh, camera girl, camera girl says that when I shave, it's getting close to springtime, and when I go ahead and shave some of this stuff off, makes me look 20 years younger. And I thought, you know, if I shaved it all off, I'd look like that wild-eyed kid that I was when I did Log Furniture 101. <laughs> but that was 25 years ago. 25 years and 14 grandkids later, and, and it all turned white. Well, of course, I didn't even have a beard in Log Furniture 101. But anyhow, so there. Now we're going to do more stuff. Okay, this one, vitally important. You don't want your world to crash around you. Right now, I got it set. Oh, yes, it's on those two little, it pivots in, uh, it pivots. It's a tilting column and drill press. It pivots on that bottom beam, okay? And right now, there is nothing that keeps it from going, ah, and crashing to that side. It only takes about 10 pounds of something here to send it that way, falling over. So, gonna fit in from this brace that I fitted in here, gonna fit in from here, back to the base down here, something of a drawbar spring or something. A drawbar spring is good because it keeps tension on it as it's going, you know, that way. Okay, so gonna fit something in there like immediately so this doesn't come crashing down, okay? Very important. Why did I cut this down? I needed a little bit more space underneath the here to get the pallet jack under here so I can move this around once it's all done. It's getting heavy. Yes. Yeah. 
thought he'll pull one more cut out of that blade, but I guess not.
So, what do you think? We're going to do a walkthrough and see if we got all three, or how well we did on all three aspects of this tilting column drill press. Okay, so here we have oh, the regular, okay, and can raise the table, lower the table. That aspect unhindered. It is still a freestanding drill press. Now, can we do, let's tip it back. How far, how does it tip back? And we are at how many degrees? Let's see, I gotta turn this digital level on here. We're at 16 points, 16.6 degrees tipped back. Oh, but now we can't use this table. What do we do? Oh, we'll have this. We'll just loosen this, take that off. 16.6 degrees. And we put this in the place. And we'll put another one in the place. This is the table that I use on my existing Dr. Press, the one that you saw earlier. But then, the table that goes on here, oh, a 2x4, two 2x6, by two by something with table across. You guys are creative. But the thing is, this tips back, and we can set that in there and have it, and it's absolutely perfect. We set the table height to the what we're drilling, and then, Next, what do we do next? So say, so we've got one aspect. This is the second. Now, to change it to So here, we're back to 90 degrees, brought it back up vertical. Then we take the pin, take the pin out and loosen the two set screws on the side. Rotate 90 degrees and where's the pin? Oh. Ah, there we are. Tighten the two little set screws up again. Don't, don't. Get those snugged up. Just snug. Put a couple of nuts. Put the nuts on the pin so it can't fall out. And then we go. And when I set this up in the other side of the room, it's going to be with a come along, not this. Not this uh, overhead crane thing. And it tips so far back, you can't even see it anymore. Here, turn, take another look. Where are we at? Oh, yeah, I can't tell where we're at. And where are we at? <laughs> right now, oh, it's only at 25 degrees. Most handrail, most stairway handrail is around 35, 36 degrees. Okay, 35 degrees, and where are we at with our heights? Oh, we have to take our table 
and move the table around. And, oh my, this table's too tall. Look at that, we've only got that much. That's all we got, this, this little bit. But I got another, another set of horses. Now we are at doctor press mode. Not just a tilting column drill press, but a doctor press. Okay, a couple of things, what we did. I have shorter sawhorses in now, so the table is lower. Okay, I still wanted the 12 inches here. And now I can always put a spacer between the razor lower, whatever I need the table to be. I can make the table be what I want it to be. Okay, to make it work with the center line design and the backrest. Okay, as you see in the videos when we're using a doctor press, the aluminum that I have on the doctor press is a four by four by quarter and 16 feet long. Most of the time can get by with other stuff. Anyhow, get to the point, Michael. All right, I would put the backstop a quarter by six, just flat stock, and underneath of this table, okay, I have two two by eights, nice straight, very nice two by eights with a piece of three quarter inch plywood on top. This would get fastened to the edge, quarter by six aluminum. I would fasten it to the back of, or the edge of one of the, the two by eight that's under right here, okay? Then that clamping and all that stuff, I can utilize that. The tape would have to be adjusted depending upon the angle. This is not oh, what you would pay almost four grand to get if you went and bought it from Tannenheiser. But it has the ability, it has the ability to make it work like that. So, other thing that need to do, I noticed one dilemma since this is such a small drill head and you want one on here. I think this has a four and a quarter inch travel. If you can, get one that is a four and three quarters or more as far as the spindle travel. You want four and three quarters or more. This one's a little bit short and it's also short from here to here. It's only like seven and a half inches. So it presented one more dilemma. I am going to switch this angle to a piece of flat stock because I need to get this back just a little bit more, another inch back, so, so I can use the same blocks that I have on the doctor press. Because as we go forward with videos and drilling stuff, we're using this, not the others, okay? <laughs> we're using this one. So if, you've, if I face a dilemma, I know that you've faced a dilemma and we're going to find a fix to it, okay? So now we can get to where we are actually making something magnificently beautiful like a walnut bench with an hourglass figure. I found a piece of scrap walnut. There is no such thing as scrap walnut. I found a piece of walnut that we're going to use next for a walnut bench with an hourglass figure. How fun is that? See you next time.